So, condenser mics, ribbon mics, do they sound any different really? How big are the differences? Well, you've probably heard a lot by now, but you can hear and see the differences for yourself today. All these questions and more answered if you just keep watching as we dive right in to see what the truth really is. Hi there, I'm Mark and welcome to Studio Tips and Sound Advice. Last week we looked at condenser mics to test the differences. This week it's a little bit different. Instead of lining up a whole bunch of mics to record simultaneously like I have been doing, this time it's just two mics, each of which will be positioned optimally to showcase them to the best, with me trying to keep the performance as similar as possible to allow a good comparison. Additionally, this week, alongside singing, I will be using spoken word. And with both of these, I will vary the distance between me and the mic from very close through to about 40 centimeters away. So you can hear the proximity effect in action. For the very closest spoken words examples, I've also included some with a pop shield and some without to demonstrate the differences that that can make. As always, this episode will be packed with information and it'll be quite a journey. So buckle up and let's get down to it. So, as you can see here, I set up the two microphones side by side for convenience sake. But for all the voice recordings, I did individual takes in the optimum position for each microphone, whilst keeping the performances as similar as possible. I will also save my observations and comments to the end this time when I sum up, as with only two mics, it will be quite easy to keep track of the results without getting mixed up. Anyway. Let's get started. This week, I am starting with spoken word, as many people use them for this, and it allows you to be very close to the mics to demonstrate the proximity effect in action to the fullest, and also the usefulness of a pop shield. Harvard have a series of sentences that were designed to test audio equipment during the Second World War, and they've stayed the same ever since. I only chose one of them to use to save everybody dying of boredom. So, firstly, this is as close as you can get to each microphone, spoken relatively softly and without a pop shield. It rained, snowed and hailed the same morning. It rained, snowed and hailed the same morning. As you can hear, especially on the ribbon, the artifacts produced by the breath not being dissipated is awful. If I had projected my voice any harder, I would have been in fear of damaging the diaphragm. This is the same distance, but with a pop shield in place. It rained, snowed and hailed the same morning. It rained, snowed and hailed the same morning. The difference is night and day, to be honest, and demonstrates why a pop shield is essential. All the subsequent tests are done with a pop shield in place to protect the microphone and give the best results. Now this spoken word was from about 20 centimeters away. You can hear the difference the proximity effect makes on both mics. It rained, snowed and hailed the same morning. It rained, snowed and hailed the same morning. And this is singing from about 40 centimetres away. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. I've spent my whole life on the streets and seen what they've become. Now we move on to the acoustic guitar. These were again recorded individually, with the mic positioned about 30 centimeters from the strings, lined up midway between the sound hole and where the neck meets the guitar. This is not the only way to record a guitar, but we are just comparing mics today. And then finally, we get onto the cymbals. I've left out the tambourine this week as I do not feel it was really offering anything that the cymbals did not. And when they are used, they are usually buried in the mix anyway. You can see here how I set them up and it was easy enough to get a good position for each mic at the same time with this sound source. Again, with the cymbals, 
You can get different textures from different miking positions depending on which symbols you have, what style of music you do, and what you're after. But for this test, I have just chosen a happy medium. Now, as before, these are all pure sounds with no post production. In the future, I may well do an episode on how to EQ the sounds to show you how you can really get the optimum out of them. But for now, we're just going to stick with things nice and simple. Please feel free to comment below with your thoughts. And if you want a WAV copy of all the files, just ask. Right, time for us to get onto the test tone section of this test. As before, I set them up exactly the same. And here are the results. Now, as promised at the start, I think it's time for me to summarize what we have learned and found out today. Although it is quite obvious. There are very large tonal differences between condenser and ribbon mics, and that has been very apparent here. Condensers have more clarity and detail in the top end, and ribbons have much more warmth and body. And as such, they both suit different vocalists and very different applications. Here's a quick summary of the different mic types and how they might suit certain vocalists. Dynamics tend to be good with more aggressive singers and music genres, such as rock and metal, whereas condenser mics can be better suited for more controlled genres like alternative and pop. And as we have seen with ribbon mics, their warmth and body can be better for very vibey genres like folk and jazz or blues. Now it is all well and good separating by music genres, but another way to approach this might be with the type of singer and their vocal characteristics and qualities. For instance, a warm singer might want to use a dynamic mic to accentuate their natural timbre, but they might also want to use a small diaphragm condenser to counteract it if it peers too much and is overpowering. Whereas a bright singer might want to use a condenser mic to accentuate their natural timbre, but again, if it becomes too much, you might consider switching to a, a ribbon mic. Now, the variety of options is why it can be of benefit to have various microphone types that you can try depending on the scenario and the singers you have. You won't know what works best until you try. And as always, if you have any questions or you think I've missed something, use the comment section below. And before you leave, if you found this useful, hit the like button so YouTube knows this and shares it with others. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you can get notified when the next video is ready for your enjoyment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.